when I first left uh, Kraft and went to Northern State Prison, you you step into the building uh, and you get your paperwork processed. The CO that was going through my paperwork, looking through it, going through it, asking me questions, and all of a sudden he's like, "What's your uh, street name?" I'm like, "I don't have a street name." He's like, "Don't fuck with me. Give me your fucking nickname. Give me your street name. Give me your gang name." I'm like. I don't have one. And he's like, you're going to fucking start my day this way. He's like, you can't be here for murder and not have a street name, a gang name, or a nickname. What is it? And I'm like, I don't run the streets. I'm from the, the, the country. And uh, I don't have a nickname. I don't know what to tell you. And, and, and then he's like mumbling under his breath, what a fucking asshole I am. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is how we're going to start here, huh? And then you're stripped naked. And then you got to squat and cough. And then they got a chair you sit in that, like, x-rays you and sees if you have anything crammed up your butt. And then you get dressed and you're told uh, what unit to go find. They don't, you know, in prison, they don't escort you. You know, jail, they escort you everywhere. Uh, in prison, it's just like, go find uh, your unit. I couldn't even get out of the building. There was double doors that were locked, and I didn't even know how to get through them. They don't tell you, you know, what to do. So I'm sitting at these double doors for a while, and then over a loudspeaker, you know, guards like, you're supposed to do this to get through the doors. I'm like, I don't know. Nobody told me what to do, you know. Now I know. Uh, so they, you know, they buzz the doors open, let me through. I find my unit. I go uh, up to my cell. And uh, I step in, and there's a black dude, and he's like, you Muslim or Christian? I'm like, I'm Christian. He's like, all right, good, me too. We'll get along, but I'll fuck you up if you touch any of my shit. I'm like, I'm not going to touch your shit, bro. And I'm like, yeah, 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 here we go. You know, uh, my very first day there, a therapist came to my cell and said, I can't believe you're here. I followed your case on the news. Your name just came across my computer. You know, will you uh, join therapy with me? And I'm like, absolutely. You know, and that was like a breath of fresh air getting therapy lined up right away. Um, I was with my uh, bunkie for, you know, a couple weeks, three, four weeks maybe. And, uh, and then he got in a fight with a uh, female CO. You know, I said in my last video, the worst part of uh, prison was the young black female guards. And uh, and they it wasn't just uh, white guys they were mouthing off to. They, they, they mouthed off to everybody. And, you know, my, my bunkie got in a fight with one of them. And guys left and right were getting in fights with them. And guys are coming from other prisons, and they're like, this stuff does not go on in any other prison. They're like, they're not, they don't talk to you like this in other prisons, you know, because they'll, they'll, they'll get fucked up. And guys were fucking them up in this prison, you know, because of that. And yet they, they still kept on talking like that. Um, you know, I, I don't know the chip they had on their shoulders in that environment. They thought they, uh, you know, had to uh, be big and boastful. I don't know. Um, so after my bunkie, my first bunkie got taken away, I had to sell to myself for two weeks. And that's unheard of in, in that prison environment to, to get a cell to yourself. Usually it's for a day. And, uh, it, you know, the cells are, were designed for single occupancy. They're all now doubles. So you're crowded in to this little space, you know, with, with a uh, bunkie. And guys that were doing long stretches, 10, 20, 30 plus years, started to cop a big attitude towards me because I had to sell to myself. Like I have anything to do at all with getting to the sell to myself. But all of a sudden it became a racial thing and it became, ah, what the hell is white boy special gets to sell to himself? This is fucking bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. I'm hearing this from one black dude after another who's doing a long stretch. I'm like, I don't control the who who comes to the cell or not, that's the guards. Yeah, oh, oh, what are you here for? What do you do? What makes you so special? I don't know what to tell you, bro. So, you know, that started off, you know, instantly. 
then uh, then I get my second bunkie, and he's a young blood gang member. And he comes in, and he's like, if you're a fucking tree jumping piece of shit, I'm going to fuck you up. You know, tree jumpers are pedophiles. He's like, 50-year-old guys, white guys in prison are normally tree jumpers. I had my news article with me and my paperwork, and I showed him. I'm like, I'm not a tree jumper, dude. I'm, I'm the complete opposite. And then he was all right. He was a code red risk, which is a suicide risk. He was off the charts. He was getting psychoactive drugs. He, he was making cocktails with his drugs and Mucinex. And uh, he's like, oh, you know, share this drink with me. It'll get you all fucked up. I'm like, nah, I'm good, bro. You know, I'm not getting fucked up. So I was in that cell for, for a short while with him. And then uh, another dude down the hall uh, had an opening. And this dude seemed like a, a good dude. So we put in, you know, to have me move down to that cell. And uh, and I got in with him. Uh, you know, uh, the guards approved it. And, you know, a week later, uh, I moved in with him. Um, and uh, I was with him for, for a while. And uh, he was Mr. Handyman Fix-It for the whole prison. He would get called out in the middle of the night to go fix a boiler or... Uh, AC unit or whatever it was he and a bunch of guys put together the trailers that they brought in uh, for housing and for classrooms they brought in these mobile trailers and they all had to be you know outfitted and, and this guy did it with a bunch of other dudes he you know he was uh, jack of all trades and the prison uses guys you know to do this stuff but he got extra privileges extra food he was out of his cell a lot and guys get pissed if they see somebody else getting one extra thing than them and uh somebody ended up dropping a slip on him that he was going to break out in the middle of the night they sent a goon squad into our cell and stripped us both naked put us out in the day room floor and then tore our cell apart, literally tore everything out, squirting the ketchup bottles out, uh, you name it, just ripping stuff apart. I had started writing my manuscript, I had, you know, notebooks with writings in it and uh, they just threw everything out. And then they came and took him away in handcuffs and uh, he got sent to a complete another prison. They wouldn't even keep him in Northern State. And then they send me back into this cell to clean everything up and uh, to organize his stuff and take it down to the front desk. You know, so, uh, you know, that's that, that was life in, uh, in prison, you know. And my next bunkie, my fourth bunkie, he and I didn't speak for seven months. We're living in this, you know, uh, small walk-in closet-sized room and he and I don't make eye contact and we don't talk, which ended up to be a blessing, you know, allowed me to rewrite my manuscript, uh, allowed me to meditate, allowed me to pray. Um, and I didn't have somebody squawking in my ear, you know, 24 seven, you know, so that, and that ended up to be a, a blessing in disguise. Uh, I'll go into more uh, life in prison stories. You know, it's, it's complete crap. It's complete hell. It's no way to live. Uh, it, it's, it's just, it, it's a shit show, you know, plain and simple. And, uh, you know, you don't want to be there, you know. Uh, it's horrible, 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 horrible. Avoid prison. Avoid, change your behavior. If you're skirting the law, you don't want to end up in that environment. It's crap, man. It's, it's, it's not a life worth living.